Welcome to Electra Online. Now that we've seen some examples of how to use the node analysis and the mesh analysis to find the currents and circuits, now we actually have an easier method for you, or maybe not easier per se, but at least a shortcut method. And you're going to like these methods. The first one we're going to do is what we call the nodal analysis by inspection. And later on, we'll show you how to do the mesh analysis by inspection. The difference is that you can very quickly zoom into the equations that you need to solve the circuit. So the first example, we're going to do it in general. There is a step, a set of steps that we need to follow. Just like before with the nodal analysis, the first thing we need to do is find a reference node with the known voltage. So here we have a simple circuit. We have two current sources and we have some resistors. Let's say that we connect the bottom of the circuit here to ground that will then become our uh, reference node. That's our first node. The second one is we need to assign voltages to the other nodes. There are two other nodes right there. Let's call this V1 and let's call this V2. The next step is a little bit different from before. We do have three resistors here. We are now going to assign, instead of resistances to those, we're going to assign conductances, which is, of course, the inverse of resistance. Let's write that down. The conductance G is equal to 1 over the resistance R. So if this is R1, R2, and R3, then the conductance can then be written as G1, G2, and G3, where G1, G2, and G3 are simply the inverse of the resistance of those three resistors. So that is step number three. Step number four, now it gets a little tricky. At first, once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. We're going to find the elements of the conductance matrix for each of the nodes and for the value between any two nodes. Now there's two nodes right here so that we only have to do it twice. We're going to end up with a two by two matrix and you'll see in just a moment what that looks like. So first we need to find G11 and G22. There's two nodes so we're going to get G11 and G22. G11 can be found by adding all the conductances directly connected to this node. So we see that G1 is connected to this node and G2 is connected directly to that node. That means that um, G11 is equal to G1 plus G2. We simply add the conductances directly connected to that node. The second one would be G22 for the second node. G22 can be found by adding the two conductances that are directly connected to that node, which would be G2 and G3 added together. G2 plus G3. Finally, we need to find the we need to find G12 and G21, which means the conductance that directly connects the uh, node 1 to node 2. Notice there's only one conductance that connects directly. There's another path we can take here, but that's not a direct connection. We have to go through two resistors to get there, so that doesn't count. We can then say that G12, which is equal to G21, because it goes both ways, is connected to this one re resistor right here, and the conductance of that is equal to G2. We now have all the elements to set up the node voltage equation. I should really write node voltage equation or simply the node equations in matrix form, which means we're going to get a matrix like this that contains all the elements with all the conductances. On the upper left corner, we're going to get G11. On the lower right corner, we're going to get G22. This here would be G12, row 1, column 2. This here would be G, row 2, column 1. and of course, those would be the same right here. We multiply that times the voltage, uh, the voltage of the nodes, that would be V1 and V2, and that then equals the currents that add the currents that enter each of the nodes. Notice we have I1 entering this node and I2 leaving, so the current, the net, the current entering minus the current leaving here would be I1 minus I2 for node 1. For node 2, we only have one current entering, that would be I2. So entering currents is positive, leaving currents is negative, and we now have the matrix that we can solve for I1 and I2. Simplifying things a little bit, we're going to replace G1 and G2 by what those are equal to. So this matrix becomes as follows. The G11 matrix is simply the sum of all the conductances connected directly to this node, that would be G1 plus G2. This element right here is all the conductances connected directly to node 2. 
that would be G2 plus G3. And here for the cross element, that would be equal to the conductance directly between the two nodes. In this case, it's the same for going from 1 to 2 as it is from 2 to 1, which would be G2 and G2. However, one more key thing here, that this would actually be a negative value. Instead of having this as a positive value, we actually should write this as a negative value. So that would be a negative G2. Whatever the value is, we assign a negative value to that. Of course, resistances can never be negative, and so therefore conductances can never be negative, but we add the negative sign to the cross elements. So all the cross elements will have negative values, so we need to put a negative value in here and a negative value there, which is a negative and a, well, actually, I'm going to leave it as a positive because when we plug in the value for the conductance, we actually plug in the negative value of that conductance. We multiply the times the voltage of the two nodes, V1 and V2, and that then equals the currents I1 minus I2 and I2. Notice in this problem what is known. We will know all these elements right here. We will know the conductances of 1 and 2 and of three, we will know the currents. The currents will be given in the circuit. The only thing we don't know is the voltages at the two nodes, which can be found this way. The way to interpret this matrix now is as follows. We multiply this element times this and add the product of this element times this, and we set it equal to this. So that's where the two equations come from. So let me write those down. This means exactly the same thing as G1 plus G2 multiplied times V1, and we add to that minus G2 multiplied times V2, and that equals I1 minus I2. Next, we take this element minus G2 times V1, and we add that to the product of G2 plus G3, and we multiply times V2, and that equals the current I2. So the matrix format like this is exactly the same as the equation format like this. In essence, what we have now is two equations and two unknowns. The two unknowns are V1 and V2, and the coefficients of V1 and V2 are simply the sum of these conductances. We set that equal to the known currents at each node, and then we can solve for V1 and V2. Either you can solve the algebraic like this using the equations, or you can simply use the matrix format and solve for it in this format. Either way will work, and I'll show you later on some examples of how to actually apply those methods again. But the steps again, as far as, far as following the Jell method to do nodal analysis by inspection, again, you end up with a circuit that has resistances and that has current sources. The first step is to find a reference with known voltage. Typically, you will ground one of the corners or one of the nodes of your circuit set equal to zero volts. That's a reference voltage. Then you assign voltages to all the other nodes. We have two nodes. We have V1 and V2. Then you assign conductances to each of the resistors at random, called as G1, G2, and G3, remembering that the conductance is simply the inverse of the resistance. The next step is to set up this matrix format so we can solve for V1 and V2. In this matrix here, on the cross, on the diagonal elements, we have G11, which means the sum of all the conductances connected to V1. So it would be G1 plus G2. Remember that G1 is the inverse of the resistance there, and G2 is the inverse of the resistance there. On this element, we've, we add up all the conductances directly connected to V2, which would be G2 plus G3. And on the cross elements, G12 and G21, which happen to be the same, that is equal to the negative of the conductance directly connected or directly connecting the two nodes. In this case, the conductance directly connecting V1 to V2 is G2. So we take the negative of G2 and plug that into the cross elements right here. Once we have that, we now have a matrix format with the conductance elements. We have V1 and V2 and the known currents. This here is equal to the sum of the currents entering minus the sum of the currents leaving. In this case, it's I1 entering minus I2 leaving for the first node. On the second node, we just have one current entering, I2, and we add that. Remember, of course, there's currents in all the branches, but we're simply talking about the currents of the sources only. This is only the currents of the sources, not the currents of all the branches. We can simply ignore that in this equation. 
then you can either solve it like this in an algebraic equation format or you can solve it like this in a matrix format and we'll show you how to do both methods later. That is the general method of solving null analysis simply by inspection. By inspection you can very quickly write equations down and begin to solve them and that's how it's done.